Hello, it's me again. Um, we're going to be going over September 28th through October 2nd's lesson plans and what that looks like at home. So on Monday, we're going to start off with prayer, flag salute, then calendar um, and story, which are going to be linked in the description below. And then we're going to move on to readiness and writing, which is where we're going to be teaching crayon grip and how that works. So one of the parts of crayon grip um, is finding out which hand is their dominant hand. If your child already has a dominant hand, that is A-OK, -okay, and you don't have to test them to see which one they go for. Um, if they do not have a dominant hand yet, which usually they'll start to develop their dominant hand around four and five years old, um, uh, sometimes into six even, um, uh, then there's a few different things that you can do to kind of test to see which hand they're more likely to go towards. That also does not mean that that's going to be their dominant hand every time. Um, especially since they're still developing. So in order to um, have them test their dominant hand, have them throw a ball at least like five times, try that out. Um, then what you can do is also pass them an object to the middle of their body and they'll reach for it with whichever hand they tend to go for. Again, do this about five times and just take a mental note. Oh, they grabbed it with their right hand or oh, they grabbed it with their left hand. Um, and so that's helping to teach um, that helps to teach crayon grip. The other part of this is there's multiple ways that you can actually write. Um, <laughs> the first way that um, you can teach is if you hold up two fingers, so we do our like one finger points, two fingers walk, do, 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 um, song. And with this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold up those two fingers. You can stick it right like this, and then your fingers can collapse in these two fingers right here. This is a correct form of crayon grip. Um, you can do it with your both right and left hand. Just teach them that they want to be as close to the tip as possible. The other way to be able to do this is hold up three fingers um, and then you'll teach this. These two fingers again will be down and you can do that again on the other side as well. Um, if you have a small object like um, a marshmallow or a puff ball or something like that, that they, they can then hold in these two fingers. Um, it helps them to hold their fingers down and, um, it helps to train them like, oh yeah, I only use these three fingers when I, when I write, or I use these four fingers and my pinky kind of just floats. So that's a way to teach crayon grip. Um, the next thing that you're going to be doing is, uh, most of you will have this book sent out to you. Um, it has a whole bunch of different activities in it please do not go ahead because when it comes time to um, be safe and meet again in person, then that's going to be when we are able to actually move ahead in this book together and it will then be in class instead of at home. Um, the goal of this is um, you're going to start off with the night sky on page five. It looks like this. Um, it has moon, stars, and then fireflies. Uh, you're going to First, again, go over that crayon grip with your child. Then you're going to um, talk about the picture. So what color are the stars? What about the moon? What about the fireflies? Um, have them point to each um, part of this picture first before they color it. And then um, before coloring, also ask them, what color are the stars? What color is the moon? What color, what color are fireflies? And if they don't know what fireflies are, then um, maybe show them a, a video um, or a picture of a firefly lighting up and show them, oh, look, it's yellow. Um, the goal of this is going to be um, point and scribble and getting them used to using a crayon in the correct way and um, used to holding it. Now, um, handwriting without tears or learning without tears, which is this curriculum, um, believes firmly that, um, and it, I do as well, which is um, tiny tools for tiny hands. So um, they have those like large jumbo crayons. I highly recommend not using those at all. Um, it teaches incorrect crayon grip and it teaches them to fist the crayon instead of actually um, using the correct crayon grip. That's also one of the reasons why I don't necessarily like markers. Um, so if you can use crayons on this at, um, at all, if at all possible, please do so. If you need crayons, let me know and I can get them to you. Uh, so... Before coloring, again, point to each object, 
the point of this is going to be then scribble or like make little circles around the object. Um, and you're gonna color in the same order. So, okay, we're going to color the stars. Point, scribble, good job. Okay, can you find another star? Point, scribble, good job. And it's going to be um, filling in those stars. Uh, then we're going to move on to um, count this way and that, which you're going to need the tag bags for. So with that, you're going to need two green tag bags and three red tag bags. You're gonna put them in the middle between you and your child, and you're going to um, talk about them. So um, when you go to count, it'll be, okay, how many red tag bags do we have? So then teach them that as they count, they can grab one and put it in their hand. One, two, three. There's three red tag bags. One, two, there's two green tag bags. And that that final number means that's how many there are. Um, we're really trying to work on that one-to-one -one correspondence and really grow in um, their counting and math abilities. Um, the Bible story coloring page is going to be Joseph, and I'll have the Bible story linked below. It's also right here, which is Genesis 42, 1 through 45, 28. Um, there's a lot of really good stories um, based around this, YouTube videos, for kids and things like that that are short and concise. Um, I'll link one down below so that you guys have that available to you. Uh, the next activity that you're going to do is follow me. Um, this is for language and literacy and you're going to give your child the two big lines. Normally, um, they're actually made of wood, but because I have to hold on to my supplies and I made copies for you um, with cover paper, um, you're going to sing the song tap, tap, tap. And I recommend doing it with like wood spoons instead. So if you have wooden spoons to use instead, that would be a lot better because then it will actually make a sound. And then you can make a rhythm with the sound afterwards as well. And the goal of this is going to be um, repeating rhythm or repeating sound. So it's tap, tap, tap. Uh, I can't remember how the song goes all the way, but I'll have it linked below. So that way you guys have that available to you. The next day, we're on Tuesday now, um, you're gonna start off your day with prayer, flag salute, calendar, and story, which again is gonna be linked below. And you're going to start your day with, where do you start your letters at the top? Uh, then as you sing, you're going to have them point high. So where do you start your letters at the top? And then they're gonna drag down. Um, and then you can play it again. And this will go into that practicing crayon grip again, where, where do you start your letters at the top? And they'll put their crayon at the top of a piece of paper. It can be a scratch piece of paper. It can be um, on like the back of their, um, their, one of their other papers that they have throughout the week that we have going on. Uh, and the goal is going to be um, dragged down and they'll be shaky at first. The goal is to get more comfortable with this as we go along. Um, and then you're going to do compare and share, uh, which is your math activity, math and numbers. And so you're going to say, um, today we're going to compare things. We're going to find big things and small things. This is stuff that you can have pre-selected. You could have big dolls and small dolls. Um, you could have a big teddy bear and like a small line, um, or a little line or something like that. Um, and then ask the questions like, this is a, um, this bear is small. How do you know that this bear is bigger than this bear? Um, and you can listen to them, encourage them to, um, to explain as much as possible. And so, um, listen to their answers, maybe ask pointed questions. So, um, how does it feel when you hug the bear? And so when they then go to give it a hug, if it's a big bear, it might take them, um, it might give them more space. That's measuring circumference, right? So it's everything has a pointed question to it. If you need help with those pointed questions, feel free to ask. Um, but they can talk about height, weight, or even how the bear feels. Um, and those are like the lead-ins for those pointed questions. The next activity you're going to do is you're going to make a dog. Um, this is your arts and crafts. And I wrote out the order for you. I have everything um, prepared and ready in a bag labeled Tuesday for you. 
So in this, um, you're going to first do the gray circles, then the white circles that, um, for the eyes, then you're going to do the black half circles for the ears, and then you're going to do the white nose. There's a little white circle here that you can barely see. Um, and then you're going to do the red bottom circle, the little black top circle, and then the two eyeballs. Um, and you'll be pasting these on. And so I have everything provided for you in the packet. The next thing we're going to do is rhyming animals. So you're going to come up with some words, animals, and objects. Um, listen to um, the words. So like B, key. Um, do you hear how they have E and E? So rhyming words have the same ending sound and explaining how rhyming words work. Um, then what you're going to do is uh, come up with another object. So maybe it's a hat instead. Do hat and key rhyme? Hmm. At. E. Are those the same? Those are different. Um, and we've worked with those same and different words before as well. So hopefully those can get reinforced in our vocabulary. The next thing you're going to do on Wednesday. So we're now on Wednesday is prayer flag salute. Then we're going to do um, calendar and story, which are again going to be linked below. Um, next, you're going to be teaching crayon grip. It's the same exact thing. So um, a different day, a different hand, maybe. So um, try having them toss a ball. It will help to enforce their dominance as well, um, or their hand dominance. Um, pass them an object a few times. Um, if you have snack or something like that, hand it to them um, in the middle of their body and then encourage them to like eat it. Um, you'll see which hand they go for. Uh, and then you're going to do twinkle, which is on page... Oof. Um, six, it looks like this picture. Um, you're going to ask the questions. Um, do you sleep under a quilt? Um, what color is it? Have you ever seen stars in the sky? What color are they? Let's find the quilt. Let's find the stars. And then um, that's all pointing. And then when you go to color, you're going to say, let's find the quilt. Um, and you'll color the quilt and then let's find the curtains. And so then they'll color the curtains after that. And then it'll be, um, let's scribble the stars. And the goal is going to be that they color in the stars. And this is again, going to encourage that little, um, either circular movement or, um, their side to side, um, diagonal or up and down, um, whichever they're developmentally at. The next activity is going to be um, line count, which you're going to line up tag bags and have them count forwards. So you're going to have them count forwards and then you're going to have them count backwards. Um, and then you can also have them build a pattern and then count their pattern forwards and count their pattern backwards. So if it was that red and green again, you could have three red, two green. So it'd be red, green, red, green, red. And then you're going to count forwards one, two, three, four, five. And then you're going to count backwards one, two, three, four, five and count that there's five. And then ask them, how many red do you have? One, two, three. Three red, how many green do you have? One, two. Two red, three green, or uh, sorry, two green, three red. Wow, we have five. And that also helps to encourage their math abilities. Um, don't try to show them a plus sign yet. That's a little more complicated. Um, next, your uh, Wednesday activity is going to be um, trace, color, and cut the triangles. So first have them trace. This is a new word that is going to be um, asked of them, especially as we move forward in this book. And we um, encourage more of that crayon grip. So um, first trace. And then once it's traced, then they can color the inside of it. And then as soon as that's done, then they can cut. Um, and use that scissor practice that we're going to be trying to build as well. Um, the thing after that that we're going to do is it's in the name. So um, for a challenge, have your child predict what will happen only after hearing the title of a book. So you'll need a book for this one. And then 
um, for an added challenge, you can have them draw pictures of what they think is going to happen in the book um, and make predictions about what is going to happen. And then for more fun, you can have your child dictate or tell um, a new story with that same title. So that's a fun little activity to do with your child. Up next, we have Thursday. We're going to start off with prayer, flag salute, calendar, and story, which are again going to be linked below. Then you're going to do capitals with the mat. Um, this involves mat man, um, just the body of him. So that blue mat. Um, the goal of this is going to be scatter wood pieces on the floor um, in front of your child and then give them the mat from mat man. Um, and then you're going to build a letter. And so um, I encourage you to build either an F or an E, something like that. Use the big long um, or use the big line and put it um, right here. And we usually um, build letters from top to bottom and then from left to right. So um, I encourage them to build them that way. And then when you are done building your letter, have them trace it. So start from the top. Where do you start your letters at the top? Um, drag down and then across as well. So encourage them to go back to that big line before they move forward in that letter. The next page you're going to um, do is going to be fireworks right here. Um, this is going to be encouraging them to put the crayon in the middle of this and then to scribble out in their firework. So this is a scribbling activity. Um, it encourages them to use diagonals. It encourages them to use up and down. It encourages them to use side by side um, or side to side. And so um, have them practice this as well. I have the order that you're going to say. So have you ever seen fireworks? What color are they? Do we see fireworks during the day or at night? Uh, and then let's find the fireworks and then let's find the children. And then you're going to say, um, or, and then from there, you're going to um, color the children and then scribble the fireworks. And then, um, so put the crayon in the center of the firework and then scribble. So that's that activity. The next thing you're going to do is family comparison. So look at a photo of your family. Um, a lot of people have family pictures. Please tell me you have a family picture. Um, and you're going to talk about who's bigger, who's, um, who's bigger than them, who's smaller than them. Uh, it can be uh, with siblings. It can be with um, even pets and things like that as well if they don't have someone younger than them. Uh, so yeah, encourage that. And then next thing you're going to do the craft for this day is going to be mat man, um, build mat man first. So, um, again, use the, it, this shows you how to actually build mat man, um, and what objects you'll need for that. Um, they were also provided last week. So hopefully you still have those. Um, so build map man and sing before you actually draw and color map man. And then over here, they already put the head and the body together. Encourage them to trace the body and the head before they add the legs and the hands and um, the ears and any other objects that they might so desire. And so this is map man. Again, everything is labeled on the back as well. The next thing you're going to do is picture search. So hopefully you have a magazine or something along those lines at your house. Encourage them to go through that and find pictures that they um, would like to cut out from magazines or um, some sort of scrap pictures that you might find along the way. Um, and then label each picture um, with this activity. What you're going to want to do is put, um, write everything in capitals when you label it. So children will, um, children will first develop capital letters. It's easier to like learn capital letters because they usually all will start at the top and go down to the bottom. Um, if you mix in 
lowercase letters, then it teaches them that some letters start in the middle and go down below the line. And developmentally, they might not be there yet um, to be able to identify the difference with that. Um, so definitely um, start with just capitals when you're doing this. Um, and that is the end of Thursday. So then we're going to move on to Friday. Um, Friday, you're going to start off with prayer, flag, salute, calendar, and story, which are, again, going to be linked below. Then you're going to teach crayon grip again. So different day, different hand, possibly. If not, they might start to pick up, oh, I like this hand better. Um, and it encourages them. The uh, next thing you're going to do is this page in your book. It's page eight. Um, you're going to talk about um, this little box. When I talk about the box, so um, have you ever seen ants? What color are they? Have you ever seen ladybugs? What color are they? Have you ever seen bees? What color are they? Um, and then you're going to go into, let's find at the top of the page, the box. What color are the insects in the corner? What color is the ant? What color is the ladybug? What color is the bee? Um, they have them labeled here as well. So black for the ant, red for the ladybug, and yellow for the bee. The goal is going to be color the bugs. Uh, the different colors so that way they are able to identify oh this is an ant this is an ant this is an ant and this is an ant as soon as they're done coloring then you can actually have them count as well so how many ants do we have and then one two three four you can have them count um, and practice that as well if you would like as an expanded activity the next activity that you are going to do is counting colors. So you're going to give your child a tag bag of any color, and then you're going to encourage them to um, go out into the house and find objects of that color. And then when all of those objects have been gathered, then you're going to count how many objects they ended up finding. So if the color was orange, then they found five objects. We count, okay, one object, two objects, three, four, five. Good job. Now can you please go and put them away Encourage them to put them back in the spot that they found them instead of just dumping them. Um, and this helps with object placement as well. Um, so that is the math activity. The other activity that we have for you for our arts and crafts object is going to be a fall tree. Um, ask them to look outside, see what they see on the trees, see what, if they see any leaves on the ground. This is a great time to start looking at the ground. Um, and noticing that trees lose their leaves. So um, a lot of the leaves are going to be down here. So you'll take, um, hopefully you have some liquid glue. If you don't, contact me and I can get that to you. Um, so put liquid glue um, down here and then some in the, in the tree, not a lot in the tree because again, trees are losing their leaves at this time. So they're down here more. And then you're going to use the little pieces of yarn that we have cut for you and paste them around the page. So that is your craft for the day. And then your um, literacy activity of the day is going to be, um, I can find a rhyme. So again, encouraging those rhyming words. Um, so you're, you'll read a book or a poem or nursery rhyme and then stop to have your child find the rhyming words. So if there's a rhyming word in um, in that rhyme or in that book, um, then encourage them to say those rhyming words. Um, examples of books that you can use. I used a lot of Dr. Seuss when I, um, did this activity. So I encourage, um, like Fox and Socks or Green Eggs and Ham, something that really talks about, um, or really emphasizes those ending sounds. Um, so yeah. If you have any questions, feel free to call me. If you need help finding a book um, or a nursery rhyme or something along those lines, feel free to contact me. Again, crayons or glue, let me know. I got you. Uh, any questions for modifications, just let me know. Um, have a good day. Don't feel like it's an issue if you ever need to reach out, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.